already exist in many parts of the city, and we're going to extend these to better manage parking in and around our business and shopping areas. We don't want the sought after parking in these areas taken up all day by just one car. We want to ensure the spaces can be used by multiple people visiting our shops, doing business, using our facilities and spending time in cafes and restaurants. Of course, for some people and situations, car travel is a necessity. We're not stopping that. We're encouraging viable alternatives because small changes can lead to big differences. That change starts with us. Victoria's population is growing and Moreland is growing too. It's estimated that the Melbourne area will grow from five to eight million people in the next few decades. They need to live somewhere. Some will choose to live here in Moreland. It's a great place to live. Moreland Council knows the challenges and opportunities that this increase in population brings. With 43,000 more people living here by 2036, there are important things to consider, plan for and act on. <coughs> things like housing, transport, our open spaces and managing the impacts of construction activity. 43,000 new people or around 18,000 new households means taller buildings or more buildings on existing blocks. This is not what many of us are used to, but lifestyles are changing and we need to adapt. We want to encourage these taller buildings to be located near public transport routes and where daily needs like shopping and community services are just a walk away. This way, more people won't mean lots more traffic and congestion. More flexible use of our industrial land can help too. Some land can change to accommodate new work and local jobs and some can provide housing for more people. We are also looking at ways that some housing can remain more affordable. Council is actively buying property to improve and purchase new parks and open spaces for all residents to enjoy. This is about thoughtful planning for a great future for everyone. The things we love, the vibrant and thriving shopping areas, our great heritage areas will still be here but changes need to happen. We want to make sure that any development is of high quality and improves livability. So we're making decisions based on research, data, world's best practice and consultation with the community. Together, we can continue to make Moreland a great place to live for our long-term residents, our new arrivals and for those who'd like to live here in the future. Moreland, one community, proudly diverse. By 2036, it's estimated there'll be 43,000 more people living here in Moreland. And they're all going to need to move about. To walk, cycle, drive, bus, tram, train, use shared vehicles, and whatever technology emerges next. Smart, effective transport is vital. So Moreland Council has plans to help keep us moving now and into the future. Our road network is already congested and more cars will only make that worse. We need to limit the number of additional cars travelling and parking around our city if we want to keep our quality of life or make it better. Building wider or more roads isn't the answer. There just isn't land available without immense cost. The answer is in making other forms of transport more attractive practical, accessible and available. We're lucky. Parts of Moreland are rich with transport options. In these areas, there are more opportunities to change the way we move around. And we're working to create even more transport options for everyone throughout Moreland. We're going to give more space to pedestrians and cyclists and work with the state government to improve public transport. We want residents who move into new housing that's close to public transport and shopping areas to bring fewer cars with them. We're encouraging this by allowing fewer spaces within these new Good buildings. Good evening councillors, members of the gallery and to our viewers live streaming tonight's meeting. 
My name is Councillor Natalie Abood and I'm the Mayor of the City of Moreland and the Chairperson of tonight's special Council meeting. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Our meeting is being held on the traditional country of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people and I wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners. I would also like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be here with us today. I acknowledge that currently many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people call Moreland home. I also acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people never ceded sovereignty of their lands and have continuously cared for their country for over 60,000 years as the world's oldest living culture. Members of the gallery, please note this council meeting is being recorded and web streamed live to council's website and Facebook. This recording will also be available as video on demand. Gallery attendees are advised that they will be recorded during the meeting. Councillors, a reminder that in line with the adopted councillor conduct principles as outlined in the councillor code of conduct, councillors should ensure that they conduct themselves in the meeting with integrity, impartially exercise their responsibilities in the interest of the local community and not improperly seek to confer or advantage any person. This behaviour will support principles for leadership and good governance that secures public confidence in the office of councillor. Members of the gallery, in the event of an emergency or disruption, we may be required to take action to ensure the safety of attendees. Please follow the directions issued by council staff and security officers. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Tonight's spe special council meeting has been called for a counc for council. Sorry, I'll start that again. Tonight's special council meeting has been called for council to consider its submission to Heritage Victoria in relation to a permit application for the demolition of the Munro Street signal box. Submissions are due with Heritage Victoria tomorrow. I'd now like to introduce the other councillors in attendance this evening. Councillor Sue Bolton. Councillor Anne Olivia Carly Hannon. Councillor Helen Davidson. Councillor Jess Dorney, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Mark Riley, and Councillor Dale Martin. The officers in attendance tonight are the Acting Chief Executive Officer to my left, Grant Thorne, the Director of Community Development, Arden Joseph, the Acting Director of City Infrastructure, Greg Gale, the Acting, excuse me, <laughs> the Director of City Futures, welcome back, Kirsten Costa. Good to see you back in the chamber. Um, the, direct, <coughs> pardon me, the Director of Business Transformation, Sue Vitovic. The Director of Engagement and Partnerships, Joseph Tobacco. The Executive Manager of Finance, Liz Rowland. And the Manager of Corporate Governance, Jody Watson. And finally, the Unit Manager of Governance and Civic Protocol, Sally Curran. Uh, councillors, are there any apologies from fellow councillors for tonight's meeting? I know I have um, an apology for councillors Yildiz and Afanli. Has anybody heard from Councillor Tapanos? No? Okay. Um, and Councillor Kavanagh? No, haven't heard from either of them at this stage. Uh, Thank you. So I'll move on to uh, disclosure of interests and conflicts of interest. Councillors, are there any interests or conflicts of interest to declare with this item? Ah, there's Councillor Kavanagh. Very good. So I'll just very uh, slowly move to the report. Welcome, Councillor Kavanagh. DEP 819, Level Crossing Removals, Heritage Victoria application to demol demolish Munro Street signal box. Uh, councillors, do I have a motion in relation to this report? Councillor Bolton. And seconded by Councillor Riley. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Bolton? Yes, I would. Um, earlier, or a few months ago, um, a couple of local residents um, put together uh, nominations of a number of heritage items along the upfield line uh, to Heritage Victoria. And Heritage Victoria has accepted these as a, an amendment to the, um, to the State Heritage Register and there will be public consultation later this year. Um, the, the items uh, that were nominated are already recognised as part of the Council's heritage overlay along the upfield line but they're not uh, currently 
uh, and the whole precinct uh, or the whole area is recognised on the State Heritage Register, but the in, not all of the individual items are specifically listed, and that includes this particular signal box, the Munro Street signal box. Um, it is unique. It's the only um, signal box um, from this particular period, inter interwar period, that exists in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, including on the Upfield Line. Um, so it is quite important to retain this signal box. Um, the Upfield Line is a particularly um, her, uh, particularly important line in terms of heritage because it is the only um, line in Melbourne, I believe, which um, preserves a whole lot of 19th and early 20th century features of our industrial um, heritage or in, industrial railway lines. So I think I certainly support this um, recommendation from the council officers um, for the signal box not to be. Um, not to be demolished, but also, secondly, for Heritage Victoria to delay any recommendation on the permit in, until after public consultation over this um, heritage amendment, um, so that the public has a chance to contribute. Uh, because you know the LXRP is not recognising that this signal box, um, there is, uh, they're not paying any attention to the fact that there is a desire within the community to specifically list this signal box on the State Heritage Register. So um, I certainly support this um, proposal. And I think we do need to um, retain, um, you know, some with integrity, some of these her um, heritage precincts. It's not the only issue in the upfield line, but it is one important factor. We don't want to lose our our any reference to our industrial past. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Riley is yeah, the thank, seconder. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, I endorse Councillor Bolton's comments. I'd just like to add that, um, yes, with respect to the, the uh, work that the LXRP took on this matter and the submissions they've made to Heritage Victoria, they assume that the Munro Street signal box isn't non, is not contributed Tory and that it fails, and they also fail to appreciate that it could be included or has been um, registered for consideration for included inclusion in the Victorian Heritage Register. Um, they also uh, fail to recognise this and and the fact that the process is an important one. It not only includes the signal box and the fact that it's an interwar uh, piece of architecture and it's still got some significant works with inside the building um, from, from you know, 90, 100 years ago, um, 80 years ago, that uh, that work still exists. Um, and they're presuming um, that it may not, it's almost presumptive that it's not going to get uh, full rec uh, consideration for its um, significance as a piece of architecture and a piece of railway architecture, but also a piece of the heritage of the whole line, which is, um, I think Councillor Bolton's already mentioned. Uh, so I'm very supportive of this, but also the trees in the area. There's some um, major trees uh, around that box that are really important as well, and they need to be um, considered. The, the, I just want to make, make mention that, that the first meeting of the Community Advocacy Reference Group occurred on Tuesday night. Um, this is a really important step for us as a council and a community coming together to work um, together to, to give the council advice about how we address these matters. So I want to thank um, all of those people who attended. There were 13 members there, one apology, um, quite a few officers who are in the room tonight. I want to thank them for the contributions on the night. It was a difficult meeting to get a whole lot of new people settled around a table. It's never an easy process, but I, I think the way that the officers supported and, and ran that meeting was really um, exemplary. Um, I wasn't able to stay to the end of it and I want to thank um, Officer Giovanna for, for taking over that role and seeing that we came to some conclusions and working towards our next meeting in a fortnight. That They were very concerned about this and um, back up basically the officer's report as you see it tonight at the, on the agenda. Um, but they were also concerned about lack of detail in the designs because um, with the, the structures that are supporting the pylons, they are going to be lower and they will actually probably come into conflict with a box like this in terms of the height. 
However, if, it, if those pylons were to be moved along, there is potential for gaps to be there between the actual um, carriageway and the building. But we don't know these things and they're really important for us to be able to do. So, in fact, we're kind of um, flying blind and we need to have that detail. That's what this report is asking for further detail. I just want to further just finally add that um, when the Minister for um, Transport Infrastructure, Jacinda Allen, was asked by the member for Brunswick about saving the trees at Gandolfo Gardens within five metres of the track in June, um, the answer came this week that, um, yes, they will uh, feature three times as many trees and plants that are currently in the area, which is a great thing, but not answering the question what they're going to do about the significant trees that are there already, and some of them have actually got... Um, potential um, strong, uh, significance for Indigenous folk as well. So I think that kind of response from the relevant minister is really important. We need to get more detail. We need to get more clarity in our parliament about it. So it bodes well, or doesn't bode well for us, but I'm hoping that the reference group will actually help us to get better outcomes as we work towards these things. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Uh, and any councillors that really would like to speak in favour? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, just Governor. briefly, just to say that uh, I'm fully supportive of this motion. Um, coincidentally, the Mayor and I were at uh, the Coburg Historical Society AGM last night and saw a film about the uh, field railway line that was funded mainly by Heritage Victoria in the mid-1980s, looking at all the different heritage aspects along the upfield railway line. Fascinating 25-minute uh, uh, film. And um, the signal boxes, etc., do play a very, very important role in the industrial heritage of this area. And uh, you know, if, if there's any way in which they can be saved, they should be. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak on the motion? No. Um, I just wanted to um, give my thanks to the group. I think, um, considering it was the first meeting, and. Thank Councillor Riley for <clears throat> chairing the meeting and I was able to drop in probably just after you left, in fact, um, when the citizenship ceremony finished up. But it looked like, by all accounts, it was a really successful meeting and a great beginning to um, that type of relationship where we asked the community what they think, which was one of the um, goals of the council plan. So I'm glad that engagement is getting a look in as we work out best ways to advocate for um, outcomes to do with the um, Alex R P project, Alex R P the P's in there for project, level crossing removal project. Um, and I look forward to uh, helping the community have their voice heard on this stuff a little bit more in the future. So unless anyone else had anything they'd like to say, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour of the motion? Against? I declare that carried. Yeah. Did you want your vote recorded? Okay, so that's carried. Thank you. So, councillors, uh, I can now declare the meeting closed and thank you all for um, attending and thank everybody who attended in the gallery and to the viewers at home. Thank you.